thanks to everyone for coming out. I uh, appreciate the kind, kind words people said uh, before the meetup and during it. Uh, here to present about Sidekick. I've worked on with Sidekick on a couple different projects. Uh, one was kind of like a social media management kind of website. Um, and one was is currently at Our Health. Uh, we're doing some, some work with Sidekick. Um, so uh, you may ask, what is Sidekick? It is an asynchronous job processing framework. Uh, it may not need to be asynchronous, like you could possibly run some of your jobs, um, you know, synchronously, but uh, that's kind of the general idea of it. Um, it's written in Ruby, so that's why I'm here today presenting it. Um, and it uses, a, I don't know what you call it, database, I guess, as, a, as the queue or store for the different jobs. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Is this an okay volume? All right. Um, so, so I talked about jobs or job processing framework. Uh, just generally a job is something that you want the computer to do uh, at some point in the future. So some sort of task or, you know, kind of work. Um, so, you know, when might you want to use a job framework? Uh, generally if you have some sort of back, background process. Um, so let's say somebody signs up for your website and you want to say, okay, I'm going to send them an email. Uh, you know, Generally, if you do it like in your, inside of your Rails controller or something like that, uh, it might take longer. Like, let's say it takes a few seconds to kind of send it out. You might want to say to them, hey, you signed up successfully, and then later in the background, send them the email. So if it takes 20 or 30 seconds, they're not just kind of waiting and saying, oh gosh, I hope my email sign up went through. You know, I hope I'm registered for this awesome site. Um, uh, another example might be, you know, if you're, uh, you know, maybe polling for your Twitter, you know, to see if there's any updates or something like that, you might want to do that on like a periodic basis or like in the background. Um, so that way when you actually come to your, you know, your experience, you see kind of the most up-to-date version, but in, so you don't have to kind of continually poll like when you're actually like, um, you know, doing, when, when, the, when the user is actually on your website, you can have all that information like loaded or cached. Um, another example might be maybe you know that this, uh, this process that you're running kind of generates some bad data and you want to clean that up, clean that up after a, a certain amount of time. You don't need to do that like while you're doing it, you can do it some period of time later. Um, another example might be like a long running process, something that takes a long time to do. Um, one thing we did recently was uh, geocode a bunch of addresses and so we used geocode.io or geocodeo. Um, and basically we uploaded a CSV that had like 20,000 addresses and said, hey, can you give me the Latin long of these um, addresses? And then that way we can kind of say, okay, we can backfill our database with that information. Um, so I don't, I don't know if they use Sidekick or some other sort of job processing framework, but basically we uploaded the CSV and then it said, cool, we got it, there are 20,000 rows. And it kind of gives us a status update as it's going along. All right, we're at 10%, you know, 20%, that sort of thing. So if you wanted to implement something like that on your website, uh, using something like a job framework might be a way of doing that to kind of give people feedback as to like the result of their, their process or, you know, kind of, uh, make sure that you can handle it in, a, in an effective way to say, okay, uh, first thing, uh, you know, I got this person's request first, I'm going to do their, I'm going to process their CSV in full, and then I go on to the next CSV. So it's just kind of a way of like saying, yep, we'll get to it eventually, versus having to, you know, spin up a hundred different servers to, to maybe process that sort of thing. Um, uh, one, maybe one of the things back here on the background processes is like, if, uh, if you have a job or if you have a task that takes 30 seconds and you're doing that in your Rails controller, you're kind of locking up one of your Rails processes for 30 seconds. So no other requests are able to come in and be served by your Rails server. So it might be something that you do, you do really quickly. You say, okay, I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to submit the CSV. Cool, I got it. I'll upload it and then give them, give them a successful response so you can serve more requests. And then on your background or in your, in your, in your workers, then you can you kind of handle that. Um, Another example is like, say you have that monthly report that has all the data um, that takes 30 minutes to generate or something like that. You might want to do something like that in the background um, it, or, you know, in uh, maybe even if somebody clicks a button that kicks that off, you know, you don't want to have to wait, have them wait for a long time. You can send them an email later. Um, one of the things that we do is eligibility processing. So it's taking a big file and saying, hey, for each of these people, they're eligible for our, our health services this month. So we want to kind of go through and process that. Um, so, let's see, um, one other uh, example would be just kind of things that you don't really like necessarily care about uh, sending at the time. So like um, maybe, maybe you want to send yourself alerts if something happens. So maybe you want to do that in like a background job. You, this is not actually like critical to the functionality of the code that you're writing, but it might be something that you want to do, you know, um, just to kind of keep track of. Um, one, one nice thing is like, say you're writing something to another API, you could use this as like a buffer to say, if it fails, we're going to retry and do things like that. Um, 
And then another example might be something that's periodic. So like, okay, every four hours I want to do this kind of task. Um, some, sometimes it's a good idea, sometimes it's a bad idea. Um, so on the social media thing that I worked on, uh, it would basically say for each Twitter feed that we have, like every 10 minutes, you know, refresh their tweets, that sort of thing. The problem was um, if you ever didn't have Sidekick running, uh, then it would just keep in queuing more and more jobs. So I woke up one morning and there was like a million things in the queue. And I was like, okay, this is a problem. Like, this is going to take a really long time to resolve. So I have actually like a little thing later on just to kind of say like, if you get into that situation, how to delete a bunch of things really quickly. Um, so I think in retrospect, we would have maybe used a different model. Um, this is kind of like, I was a consultant on that project after they had initially started it. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm working with this. Let's see how it goes. Um, so there are other similar projects in the kind of the Ruby ecosystem, especially. Um, delayed job is kind of like the original. Um, it uses your database to kind of store the jobs um, so you can enqueue uh, jobs. Uh, I'll talk about like queuing and workers and things like that. Sorry, I've not like really well defined some of these words. Um, to, you know, so basically uh, inside of your database it'll say I want to perform this job at this time or you know, with these arguments, that sort of thing. Um, I find kind of in general like putting this kind of information in your database may, may be a bad thing as far as like scalability or you know, other kind of concerns like if your database you know, uh, gets hammered because of your workers that could be bad for your end users, right? Um, same thing, there's a newer kind of thing called Q Classic. Um, I just learned about this while kind of researching this uh, presentation. Um, apparently uses Postgres to store jobs and it's just kind of a newer thing. Might be something to check out. Uh, Rescue is a very similar. It also uses Redis as the back end. Um, uh, the one thing I would uh, kind of wonder about is does it have higher memory usage and or is slower? Um, so just something to be aware of if you're using that. Um, uh, one I learned about yesterday or today was Sucker Punch. I guess it's, uh, it's actually everything is in memory, so there's nothing persisted anywhere. Um, it's like as, if, as soon as you spin down your workers, all your jobs are lost. So that could be good if, you're, if you don't care about that sort of thing. Like maybe you're doing that social media updating and you say, okay, I don't care if all these other uh, things got deleted, I just want to re enqueue them in the future anyway. Um, and it's built on Concurrent Ruby, which is actually a really cool library that I feel like somebody could give a whole presentation on. Uh, not me, maybe, but um, but it, it basically has a lot of different concurrency um, kind of uh, s like setups from different, like almost like different languages, how they do like channels or actors or all those other kind of like things. It's all built in there and it's really cool. Um, and then there's Shoryuken, uh, which apparently is Amazon SQS thread based. So if you're on Amazon, you're using that. That might be a potential alternative. Um, so the reason I'm presenting on Sidekick is one, I know it, and the other is I think it's pretty fast uh, as far as like processing jobs and kind of like being able to handle a lot of jobs. Uh, the memory usage I think is pretty good. Um, it enables concurrency, so you can use like multi-threaded to kind of reduce, that. it kind of goes along with the memory usage aspect. Um, it works with active jobs, so this is something I just learned about today. <laughs> so while, while you're, whenever you make a presentation, I feel like you learn new things. Um, I guess Rails 4.2 started with active job. Um, so this is just a, it's kind of like a, an abstraction of maybe Redis or a Rescue or Sidekick or any of these other kind of job frameworks. It's basically just a way of uh, Rails saying, we acknowledge that you will need to use jobs. And so this is just like a generic way of handling that. And then you can kind of say, I want to use Sidekick as my backend for the jobs. And it'll kind of handle that. Um, the somewhat caveat here is that I think a lot of the kind of more advanced things won't exactly work with active jobs. So, um, for this presentation, I'll just show how you use Sidekick without Active Job. Um, uh, the website uh, or the the uh, wiki on Sidekick kind of gives this an example. This may be biased because the person who wrote Sidekick is doing the benchmarking. But for a uh, no op job, so basically something that does nothing, no operation, um, it, they were able to get like 4,500 jobs per second on their like MacBook Pro. Um, with the, the older version, it was like 800 jobs per second. And then if you look at something like rescue, is like 240 jobs per second or delayed jobs, 215 uh, jobs per second. So 4,500 4, versus like 215, that's just like doing no operations whatsoever. So a lot of it's probably like, you know, quickly loading in something from, from Redis or something else like that. But anyway, just something to consider. Um, disadvantages potentially, you're introducing another system, uh, Redis, that you have to maintain. So it's like another database or something like that. Um, so you may be aware of that. If you're running in like a Heroku-like environment, there's like Redis to go or other things that kind of manage that, which I think I think is a, a good thing to use. 
Um, really important, you need to use thread safe code if you're going to use Sidekick in any sort of like threaded environment. So by default, I think they spin up five threads per worker, and I'll discuss that in a little bit. Um, but if you're doing that, you may need to make sure you have thread safe code. Uh, they have it like in, in a few times in the wiki, but it can really bite you if you're not uh, doing that. So, um, so I've said a lot of things about a queue. Uh, this is the like basic like computer science queue. Uh, we actually joked earlier it was like uh, we had a queue for the pizza, right? So it's like first person in to get the pizza gets the pizza, and then other people form a queue behind them, and it's kind of like first in, first out. Essentially, you get your pizza. And then you're happy. Um, same thing here. You know, this could be a uh, hey, I'm waiting to process the CSV, and then this is the thing that's being worked on, that sort of thing. Um, or maybe a, hey, this is an email that needs to be sent out. It's not quite ready to be sent uh, until like a worker is ready to pick this up at the front of the queue. Um, so it's just kind of a way of saying, uh, you know, we have 100 things left to do, and the workers will slowly take things off the front of the queue and then start doing them, whatever that happens to be. Um, so I've talked a lot. Maybe I'll show just kind of some examples of what a, what a job might look like, that sort of thing. Um, so I have a project that I created. Um, I guess I could look here. Uh, so basically just a Rails project. And then I added some like foreman and sidekick setup. And then I added the sidekick web UI, which we'll talk about. And then I added a thing called sleepy job. Um, so if I start up sidekick, uh, I can say, Okay, so it's a little hard to see, uh, just because of the size. Is that like somewhat readable? Okay, I can make it. I have an idea. I have an idea which is make this the whole thing. Okay, all right. Pretty okay. Hang it. Which part of the Uh just kind of the text, I would say. Uh, not quite. All right, I'll bump it up a little more. I'm getting there. The, the challenge I'm working with is the TV resolution is not exactly what is on my screen, so I am not ever sure if I can, if you guys can see it. So okay, so, so that does that look okay? Um, all right, so basically I, I started a sidekick uh, worker process. Um, and so it's saying this is running in a Ruby environment, there's a license to this, blah, 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 and then that's pretty much it. So it's just kind of kind of hanging out. It's waiting uh, for something to be enqueued. Um, so also in the project, uh, I can run a Rails console. Um, and so I have a job called Sleepy Job. Um, so it's pretty useless for the most part. Um, so every sidekick job has a method called perform, and that is how it knows what to do and how you know uh, how like what sort of arguments are passed to it, that sort of thing. Um, so this this job when it gets created or when it gets enqueued and it's performed, it'll say yawn, getting sleepy, and then it'll do it'll sleep for a while. Sleep is just kind of like pausing, and then it'll it'll print some Z's. It'll sleep again, and it'll say wow, that was a something nap where is power uh, great, super, or mediocre nap. Um, so uh, when you, so this, uh, this file right here is app job sleepy job .rb. I think it is useful or important to put it somewhere in like a, a folder. I think app jobs is where the active job looks for it, and I think that's where I've generally put them in the past. Um, and I think having a name like sleepy job here matches the, the file name is important for Sidekick to know to like pick it up. And I think also, um, this is just like a, uh, a way of kind of saying this is a sidekick worker instead of like, uh, uh, you know, inheriting from this sort of thing. It's just more of like a mix in. Um, uh, I can talk about this in a little bit, but I just want to kind of run through uh, like what this would look like. So if I say sleepy job, this is a thing, this is a, this is a constant that we know about. Um, so you can say oop, perform async. So this will give us an ID, which is F39B something. So this is basically the ID of that job that just got enqueued. Um, so if we go back to here, um, it says, cool, F39B, I found that. I say, yawn, getting sleepy. And it's a, it snores for a little bit and says, wow, that was a mediocre nap. So, um, so this is kind of like the simplest or one of the simplest possible jobs you can have. Um, you can have other methods in here, you know, like something 
you know, and then you can call that from your perform method. But this is kind of like the it's kind of like the basis of like where you'd put something. Um, in the sidekick options here, we have a retry. So if there's a failure, it, it'll retry a certain amount of times. If I change this to one, um, then if it were to fail, um, I might need to restart this um, just because I think whenever you change a job, it needs to reload it into memory. Um, one thing here is it'll, it'll say shutting down, it'll say terminating quiet workers. So basically, uh, Sidekick, when it shuts down, has like a quiet period to say, hey workers, finish what you're doing because I'm gonna shut down, and then it like actually shuts down just to kind of give them some chance to finish what they're doing. Um, so I can run that again. Uh, there should be no jobs in the queue right now. Um, so, so the change that we made was we're, 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 we're having an error here and we have a one retry. So let's try, let's try in, in queuing another job. Um, so, so it did boom. Uh, so here is the kind of stack trace um, of that error. And then I think it should, in, it should re enqueue it, I think, but maybe, maybe that won't happen. Um, one thing to show here is there is a sidekick uh, UI that you can install. It's just uh, through your like Rails console or uh, Rails um, uh, routes, and so you, so you can add this on here. It's just a Sinatra app that you can basically drop in. So you can see like um, are are any workers working that sort of thing. Currently, I have one process working. Um, uh, are there any in queued? It doesn't look like there is any. There's one dead. I think this is from okay. So it must have failed once. So may, oh, maybe because it only retried once, uh, or maybe it only tried once, that sort of thing. Or maybe it failed again, I don't know. Oh, anyway, sorry, worst demo ever. Um, cool, so then the other thing is, um, it says queue default here. You can have multiple different queues. So let's say you have like um, something that's really, really important, you might put it in like a priority queue, or like you know high priority queue, um, that way, Say you have like 10 workers, you can have like one just dedicated to like high priority things so it doesn't get blocked on like lower priority jobs. And then you can have the other ones kind of serve like lower priority kind of things. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe sending out your emails on registration is really important, but then, you know, doing this kind of like nightly job thing is not very important. So um, just kind of a way of kind of saying you have different like levels of service. Um, another way, another thing you can do here is you can, you can pass in like multiple arguments. So you can say like, um, how sleepy, um, so I guess we'll, we'll assume that's like a, an integer. Um, so if we were to pass in, I'm gonna restart this uh, worker again. Uh, I'm just gonna restart the Rails console as well in case that was cached. Um, so if I do perform async with like five instead, let's see if that works. Cool. Oh, and then it still boomed. <laughs> so uh, instead of instead of printing out the three snores, it does five snores now. So that's kind of how you would uh, generally like enqueue something. So from your controller, if you wanted to do this, you would just say perform async. So perform async says you know uh, just put this onto the queue and perform it you know whenever you get to it that sort of thing. Um, you can also say perform at. I think like uh, you can say or you actually can say perform in. Uh, something like that, perform in five seconds. Uh, I guess you probably want to pass an argument to that now because we have that um, that change, right? So uh, let me first revert this one change. Um, close, I'll close the uh, psychic worker again. Um, and then, so I might say with two is the argument this time. So it'll enqueue that with 3.8 is the job thing. It's gonna wait a few seconds, um, five seconds, and then it starts that job. So um, you might say, okay, if somebody signed up for your uh, website but you don't wanna email them right away, you might delay it an hour or two just to kinda say, all right, you know, let's give them the first newsletter an hour from now or something like that. There are definitely better systems to do that uh, than Rails and Sidekick possibly, but um, yeah. So, so that's kind of uh, how you would create like a new job in a nutshell and kind of use that. Um, so for each individual task that you have, you might want to create a new job for that. So you can kind of say, you can queue a different kind of job. Um, I guess, does that, uh, does anyone have any questions at this point? So. Is there's two different perform methods there. 
Mm-hmm. Before Macy came before in. Yeah. But those all route back through the perform method. Correct. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, it seemed like the signature for this one was basically perform in, like what time interval, and then like what other arguments you want to give it, and then the perform async is just like what arguments. Um, I think there's a way to perform it like at like right now essentially or like inline code, uh, but I don't remember what that is exactly. Uh, so the Sidekick wiki is kind of the source of all knowledge uh, about Sidekick or most of it. I think there's a like, pretty good like Stack Overflow and things like that. So you can also say like perform in a certain time or, or perform at uh, like maybe midnight or something like that could be useful. Um, so. And then there's a, there's other kind of hookends with like uh, action mailer and active record and things like that. Um, so. so, can you or should you uh, put break tasks in there? Um, like explain a little more. Like, uh, let's say I've, uh, uh, I write these. They're very concerns, but they're they're clean up or mm, scraping tasks. Yeah. I want him to run at three in the morning. Would it be appropriate to put that break task in one of these uh, sidekick objects? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think you could. I mean, there's like a few different ways you could do it. So if you if you had a rake task already, you could like maybe like call that directly, like you know from from sidekick. You could like shell out if you wanted to get crazy and like say like rake whatever like from a from a uh, like. Uh, system kind of call. Uh, I think one of the ways I would think about doing it would be like refactoring your rake task. So the rake task calls like a class or like a function somewhere and you can kind of like test that or do whatever you want to do. And so it's basically your rake task is just like call this thing and then your your worker could then do the same thing if you wanted to do the same functionality. So it's like okay uh, call that thing and, and instead of having to go through rake because rake has a little bit of like a overhead or setup I think to that. Um, although, uh, if you're maybe like this rake task calls this one, calls this one, or something like that, that could be like, I don't know, maybe uh, be more complicated. So. Sorry. Uh, just a clarification Did you say that you can uh, put different jobs in different queues and assign them priority? Yeah, well, and, and the priority is um, it's kind of like a fictional makeup thing. Like you could have your highest priority queue be actually the lowest priority. Like if you said, like super important, and like you didn't you didn't d you devote didn't any what the name you did. right right oh, like yeah like you didn't devote any workers to it. Um, then it would not actually be super high priority. Um, but yeah yeah it's basically just uh, a way of kind of saying yeah we can have multiple different queues and then uh, certain workers can look at certain queues. Um, you can even stack it where you can say, like, look at the critical one first, and then the default one, and then the little one. So if there's any critical jobs, it'll serve those first. If there's any, you know, default ones left, then it'll kind of work on those. So that way you don't get um, kind of like contention or like uh, you have like uh, 10 workers and all of them are serving these like 30 second jobs that are just clogging up everything. Um, so, cool. So, like, an actual case that we have for that one. So did, so did, in that case, did you assign like different workers to it to that, or did you actually say check this queue first and then check that queue? Yeah, we said like always process critical first, and all like user generated updates go in critical queue, and then system generated updates are in like a low priority queue. And there's some that are just dedicated to critical, where it's like, okay, even if you're idle, we don't care. We just want to have those critical things come through as quickly as possible. Like we lost the TV behind you. <laughs> cool. Uh, other questions? You had a question? No, no I was just going to mention that you can totally follow the great tasks. For those jobs. In fact, we used to do it a lot before we moved more to the service object model. So okay, cool. That's good enough. Um, so, do you think that these, um, like this queuing is happening on the controller? So, after after you know we're rendering and we're rendering JSON or whatever, then are we calling the, the, the queuing right there? 
Yeah, it kind of depends on like where you want to do it. Like usually I would try to kind of like return a response to the user as quickly as possible. Like like once you know it's a success and say, yep, 200, you know, we, you know, we got your sign up and then you would like enqueue that job. And then so the nice thing is that that happens super quickly. All it is is like adding something to like Redis basically behind the scenes and then it's like continuing on and it's, you know, on its way. So, um, Um, so one important note is, so when you're in this perform method, um, these arguments like should need to be basically like Ruby, Ruby primitives, like uh, integers or strings, um, things like that. So basically like uh, because of the way that Sidekick serializes these arguments, so the way that it saves the arguments um, for like later usage, like to deserialize them, um, it, it converts it to JSON. So if you have some sort of complicated Ruby ob Ruby object like a date or like a you know complicated Ruby object, like you can't just throw on uh, a like user and expect that to work well all the time. Like there may be kind of issues there. So uh, one thing that is a good pattern also with that is to put say say you're say you're saying user one two three. Uh, we want to, you know, check their Twitter feeds or something like that. You, you probably should just put their user ID on there um, for two reasons. One, because it is a primitive, and two, because um, it may change, like that user's data may change by the time you get around to processing them. So say there's a, like a backup of the queues, it might be an hour later and they've updated their name and you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, redo that. So you want to actually uh, enqueue the one, two, three, and then when, you, when you're in the job, look it up in the database again so that you're like, using the most fresh data. Um, it's not like, you know, uh, impossible to break that at that point, but, you know, at least it's a lot less likely to be stale data. Um, uh, one kind of, I don't know how to say this word, item potency or adempotency, I don't know. Uh, but basically, if you have a job, it should not do anything that has a side effect uh, more than once, right? So let's say you're, let's say you have a background job to uh, take credit cards and charge them on a monthly basis or something like that. So if you have something like uh, you charge the card and then you write it to the database, that might be bad because then if your database call or write fails or something later on in the process fails, you might charge their card twice because like let's say, let's say the job fails, it gets re queued and then you keep charging someone's card, you know, Fifty dollars, fifty dollars, fifty dollars. It's like okay, they'll probably get annoyed with you. So um, just kind of being aware of this thing could run more than one time. So maybe I need to say, hey, I charged. I'm I'm planning on charging this user's card for the month of July. Don't charge it again if you see this job come up again. Um, and there are other like kind of more uh, advanced like Sidekick Pro features that might help with that um, to say like something is only enqueued once. Um, and then to kind of go back to this thread safety thing. Um, you know, I think do not turn on concurrency unless you're sure that your uh, project is thread safe, basically. Um, um, so I kind of have mentioned like threads and workers. So the easiest way to think about it is a worker has many threads. So you can have one worker has one thread or maybe you have like one worker has 10 threads. And so um, the, the nice thing is that workers, workers are kind of like your base and that's like where everything knows to like work off of. So it, they have kind of a higher memory footprint, but each additional thread is, is very small on top of that. So it's to your advantage to run, uh, let, let's say you want to run hundred workers total. You might want to run uh, four workers with 25 threads each versus uh, one, uh, 100 workers with one thread each, right? Because it would be much, much better to have fewer number of workers with more threads. Uh, th that comes to a limit, you know, you don't want to have a, a thousand work, uh, threads on a worker because then you might get like contention or other kind of things like that. Uh, but just something to be aware of. Um, one thing with this is if you're using Rails and stuff, you'll need to think about like your database connection pool. Because um, if you have like 100 things asking for database connections, like you'll probably have to up that and also then take into account any um, like Rails process that you have that are asking for uh, database connections. So like if you're running like Unicorn or Puma or whatever that is multi-threaded, then you're going to have to also add those into there. So you might, uh, I, f I find that to be tricky to like reason about and like think about. So. Um, one thing that you can do is like in this job, you can actually do like a Postgres sleep or something like that. And then you'll know that you're using like a certain amount of threads um, just, just for like testing purposes. Um, 
So we talked about the different queues, and basically the way that you just run that is just a bundle exec sidekick normally, or you can say like what queue you want. And if you want multiple queues, you can say queue critical, queue to, then, then dash queue default, then dash queue low to, to say use, it, use them in this order. Um, I talked about just in the past, if you need to clear out a bunch of um, uh, sidekick jobs, you can just kind of use, there's like an API for sidekick in Ruby that you can kind of manipulate sidekick. Uh, we, lo we looked at the web UI pretty briefly, um, just kind of a way of saying like, hey, what's going on with Sidekick? Um, right now, apparently it's idle. Um, this kind of shows you like a spike of like how many things have happened. Um, this could be good if you have a like really high number and then they go low, um, which I think may bring me to monitoring. So uh, it, it is a good idea to kind of like monitor how many jobs are coming through the system, how many uh, you know, what, what is the average like queue depth or age, that sort of thing. Um, these are not things that I have done much of, but I think it would be a good idea. Um, so there's actually a pretty good blog post that uh, the creator of this um, app has made, or the creator of this framework has made, um, which talks about a lot of this kind of stuff, at least for Redis. Um, so it's good to know like when your jobs aren't working because otherwise, you know, it might be you're not doing certain things that are important for your website. Um, so this is a open source project that has a pro version and an enterprise version. Um, so the pro version gives you cool new features like batches. So we actually use this quite a bit. Um, when you upload that CSV, the functionality that says, hey, I'm going to take each row and show you how far, you, for how far along you are in the processing of this is using the batches functionality. Um, so it's just kind of a way of like saying, uh, I can fire off hundreds of new jobs from this initial job and then kind of track where they're at. And like, hey, 99% of them succeeded, this one failed, you should take a look at it. Um, so just kind of a slick way of doing that. Um, there's some other kind of things like expiring jobs. So maybe like it's Thanksgiving and you want to, you know, do your uh, sales uh, newsletter, but you say, okay, if I don't send this by the 1st of December, I want to expire this job and just get rid of it or something like that. Um, or some just additional kind of web UI niceties. Um, there's also the enterprise version, which has some kind of more, uh, you know, things you may need, but things you may not need. Um, like if you want to encrypt your Redis parameters so you don't want to send PHI or PII, you might consider using the enterprise version. Um, there's things like periodic jobs, like I want to run this every four hours. Um, I've generally used things like clockwork or there's other kind of gems that do that. Um, but if you are all in on Sidekick, this may be a better approach. Um, there's things like unique jobs, so like this job is only created once uh, as far as like across the system, so it's not able to be re queued until it is like dequeued, I guess, or processed. Um, rate limiting, I think uh, you brought that up, like potentially a way to uh, rate limit your jobs so that you don't send out too many uh, things in a short period of time or something. Um, so I was going to talk more about Redis, but I really haven't dug much into the, like the details of Redis. Um, so it's basically, yeah. Basically, it's just a data store that has a bunch of commands. And so you can say like, hey, I want to append uh, this value to a key. So uh, I guess another way of looking at it, it's like, a, uh, my, this, this is my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, key value store. Um, is that correct? OK, so basically, it's basically like a Ruby hash, but it's in a database, kind of. Um, so you have like keys, and you can say, for this given key, I want to add a, add a value, I want to assign a value, I want to make it a hash, or I want to do certain things. Um, so it's just kind of a, a, there's a bunch of different commands you can do. I don't know most of them, but um, it, if you're kind of playing around, if you want to get in there, you can just do like write a CLI and you can do like, I don't know. So you can you know, play around in there and kind of, you know, uh, mess around with Redis if you want. So um, sorry, that was maybe a little disappointing, but uh, I, I didn't really have time to do that. So um, one last thing, our health, we're hiring. Uh, potentially more experienced developers at this time, but uh, we're, we're generally working in a Ruby stack with Rails, Sidekick, obviously. Um, we're also doing a lot of like front-end JavaScript with like React and Redux, um, if that interests you. Uh, we do like clinics for uh, like large employers and uh, kind of on-site near-site clinics. And then we're doing more with uh, like consumer, uh, the, the consumer healthcare experience uh, going forward. So um, that's all I have for now. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? 
you run into, I don't know, uh, I guess it depends on the kind of thing the process is. Have you ever had an issue with uh, an acute job trying to call an object that hasn't finished its commit throughout your record? Yeah, like, that can happen. That? Yeah, um, I guess like in that case, maybe you want to do something like, you know, after save kind of, like it, depending on like the active record life cycle, like. Uh, it might be kind of hard if you're like in a controller situation. Um, you know, it's like, hey, I think I thought I created this thing, but may maybe I guess you say like, if the user saved, then you know that they are officially saved, and that's when you'd want to enqueue that thing. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a that's a valid concern. Um, All right, cool, thanks.